Setting up for another exciting video. And we have the Bob Ross set. And you can see we've got Bob Ross over here on the right, ready to go. In today's grand adventure, I am going to be painting two Bob Ross paintings. One at 1.5 times the speed. And then the second immediately after at double the speed. And there's no pausing. And as soon as his video ends, it brushes down. That's the challenge. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm actually going to be able to watch him and follow along this time, which is something I actually I don't think I've done. And then I was just thinking, why don't you just paint along normally? Because I'm not normal. You should know this by now. Also rocking a new toy. Now you've seen us show this beautiful Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K off before. We didn't have lenses. We've opened one of our new lenses and we have a bunch of new lenses that we get to open and play with. We haven't looked at them because we've been saving them for you. So we opened up this one. There's some cool ones we can look at after we record this video and I'm so excited to play with them, including a probe lens. Oh! So that's rolling. We've got the screen recording going. Looks like locally. Okay. Back up recording. Action. Top recording. And today we are revisiting our good old friend Bob Ross and we're going to paint along And today we're revisiting our friend Bob Ross and I'm going to paint along with him in the duet of paint And today we are revisiting our good old friend Bob Ross and I'm going to paint along with his videos but Take four! We've got one little floppy hair, this one little teeny guy on the side there you go. Ah, oh, you look up, you go. Just one little floppy. <laughs> oh my god! That's double speed! Are we racing? You want me to press play as soon as I'm ready? As soon as you're up there with the camera. Oh my camera. god, you're sweaty. Yeah, I know. Just wait. Okay. Uh, I'm drenched in sweat. Turns out painting Bob Ross paintings at double the speed is a massive workout and makes you feel like a disgrace of a human being, which is definitely quality content. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, there is a there's a lot of mess here. And I'll go clean some brushes and we'll clean this up and I need to go lie down for a minute before I come back. So, hey, there we go, there we're back. I love, I'm liking that transition, except I use it inconsistently and probably sometimes inappropriately. So the clean up was a bit of an ordeal. Of course, we had Gareth's help and Dusk who isn't here and doesn't like to be on camera. Took me about an hour and a bit to wash the brushes. <laughs> well, let's play with some toys in a second, but before we do, Gareth mentioned that this thing is getting moldy. Where's the mold? People ask what I do with the, with the artworks after I, oh my God. Oh, that's Festy. Yeah. That's like a proper little colony of mold. That's yeah. like, oh wow. But it could be like blue cheese mold. It could be like take add to the flavor. I reckon this is gonna go any second. You reckon? So if we just. Oh, it's, it's like barely it. holding on. That's funny. And look at all this. Like it's all completely slow. Hey! Who said you could do that? Every That's my artwork. Look. You ruined it! When we recorded the video, this was like spongy and soft. This is now like cement. Kill someone with this. You could absolutely. It's very, very. So now this is people who ask what I do with the artworks. The bigger ones in inevitably have to go at some point, unless I'm super, super proud of them. This one never went. And I don't have that. Like that's a lot of monster clay that I could reuse right there. But I'm so proud of that sculpture. And every time I see it, I think, I made that, so I leave that there. And if I do another Monster Clay sculpture, I'll buy more Monster Clay, and he'll just stay where he is for as long as he'll survive. But this one is doomed. Gareth, if you could please play the violin with your mouth. Ow! Sad music. Sad music. Ah! I didn't think that'd actually break. So this is the one we used in today's video. The Sigma. This is the 18 to 35. What? It's nice, nice bit of glass, as, as the pros call it. And I'm, I'm one of them pros. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Move on to the, the chunky one. So basically, we have two core lenses, and we got them to be particularly artsy, meaning, hey, cool, this has got a mounting plate. 
bear. She's useful. So basically, these are for like reveal shots and all the stuff. They have a really open aperture at a 1.2, was it? Or 1.8? Yeah, 1.8 aperture. Was it 1.8? 1.8, yeah. So that means we can get like a really nice blur and get the feel. Let's do it. Check this out. Oh, this thing is freaking hefty. <laughs> all right, check this out. That's as far away as it can get. So when we focus on this guy, got a really nice depth of field. There we go. And then we can go in from there. Obviously it's very wobbly. Now this isn't meant to be macro, but if we're filming outdoors and we're wanting something distant and I'm over there, yeah, this is the one to go with. Like welding, for example, which is something I'd like to play with at some point, this will be super useful because we need to be able to get close to the action without getting too close to the action. So that's what that one's for. It's sort of fun though to see like those setups where like the lens is like ridiculous and then you realize, oh, there's a camera in there somewhere. <laughs> that's right, it starts at 50 mil, so you gotta be yeah. way back. Yeah, That'll be good though, because we've got some, uh, we've got the two core options. We'll obviously use this one a lot more, but that one for like certain specific scenarios will be really useful. Absolutely. But this one I'm particularly excited about. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Nice, yeah, it's got it's like its own case. So why did we need to buy these lenses? Why couldn't we use these in the old camera? Okay, that's a very good question, Jared. Thank you. You already knew the answer to that, didn't you? I did. Cheeky boy, he's asking for you. Watch this. So we have the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 4K, which we use for every video, which uses a micro four thirds uh, fitting or lens, which we also use with GH5. So everything we have, and the and the pocket, the micro studio cameras. So every camera we have uses micro fill <laughs> We got sent the pocket cinema 6K, and there have, have been scenarios where filming 6K or I mean even 4K with slow-mo or whatever would have been really useful. So to have the extra versatility is really ideal. While it's not the, the camera we would lean on for every video, we're getting lenses for it that are going to fit the more niche circumstances where we're going to use it. So we've got the go-to, we've got something a little more a little more wild and a little more out there, but they're both mainly for filming the big drama shots or the cinematic stuff with a really high depth of field. And then this one in particular is going to be really fun. But the point is, they don't, it's a different lens fitting. It's a full frame lens. So they're EF mount lenses. And this is a lens that I have wanted to use a long time. This is called a probe lens. It's an interesting shape. It certainly is. Quite, uh, quite probe-like. Unique thing about this lens is it's a macro lens, so you can get really, really up close, and we'll show you in a second. The other thing is, it's um, it's its unique shape enables you to get right up and in between and through things. So I can film through this model up and like come out how it's like. Let's do it here. If and if you plug it in, it has a light on the front. Maybe let's plug it in. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm just going to plug it in. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that will give you extra light as well. And if you're fil filming in ridiculous scenarios, like inside a little bottle or something, look at that. The, the light is quite warm. The white balance, I guess, needs to be tweaked. Oh my god. You can get closer than that. This is like mega macro. Whoa. You can see like the dust particles. Oh my God. There's something suggestive going on here, but I don't know quite what it is. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So here's my tiny little joker. See what that looks like on the, on the lens. Tiny, look, look how tiny he is. Give that a look. That's like proper macro. So you can get your focus and get even closer than that. And you can film that in 6K as well. Like, look at that! Look at it! <laughs> that's completely unachievable that's, with the other yeah, lenses we got. That's amazing. And it ha like that looks like a clean shot too. Like that looks cool. That's crazy. Absurd teeny weeny challenges. Here I come, baby. Well, that was a very intense uh, and productive day. Got, got some new toys, did a crazy painting thing. I gotta say, I was so beyond exhausted after that Bob Ross double time video. But it's gonna be a good video. <laughs> uh, question of the day comes from Linda Gow Lamb, who says, now that you've sculpted with ramen noodles, which you saw the 
results result of. Uh, do you have any future plans of any sort using macaroni or other pasta shapes? And what sort of art could you do with rice? There are all some very good ideas. I actually do have a pasta themed video idea planned for not too far from now. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I don't want anyone to take my, my little my terrible ideas. <laughs> yeah, they're all bad and shouldn't be done. But I'm going to continue to do them. And I hope you continue to enjoy them. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later with another hand transition.